Now before I get into anything else, I want to ask you guys a simple question. What were you like as a small child? If you were at that age and all of a sudden you saw what looked like a giant fucking robot in your backyard, be honest, what would your reaction be? Would you A, scream and run away in fear, B, be stunned and frozen in place, or C, mistake it for the fucking tooth fairy? Oh yeah, these writers definitely understand how these kids function. Or even how human beings function for that matter. Well, because the other one was talking about my eBay page. You were the strangest boy I have ever met. Oh really? Is he as strange as that giant fucking robot that's standing right in front of your face? Alright, so as we left off from part one, meteors are crashing into the earth, and Michael Bay can't help but reference a film that he made back when people actually gave a shit about his style of filmmaking. This is easily a hundred times cooler than Armageddon! I swear to God! Yeah, fun fact, this movie actually has a Criterion release. Ain't that fucking crazy. Somebody down 911! Egmar Berman, Stanley Kubrick, Michael fucking Bay. The great artists of our time. Do you think it's possible that anyone else in the world is doing this very same thing at this very same moment? <laughs> Anyways, the meteors turn out to be the Autobots that the fans all know and love, such as Optimus Prime, and Jazz, and uh... <sighs> I guess I should be happy for the fans of the franchise, since these characters actually look pretty great in CG. And on top of that, they got the original voice of Optimus Prime back. Are you Samuel James Witwicky, descendant of Archibald Witwicky? But none of this happens until a whole hour into the film. Now I'm going to compare this to one of my favorite films from the past couple of years, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Is that biased? Yeah, probably. It's true that we don't get to see characters like Han and Chewie right away. Hell, we don't even get to see Luke Skywalker until the very end of the film and he has no line of dialogue. But the film more than makes up for this by introducing new characters that are just as likable and that we can identify with, and giving them exciting obstacles to overcome. And even if you didn't end up liking these characters as much as the film wanted you to, at least we can agree that Rey, Finn, and Poe are much better written than all of the human characters in this film combined. I mean, let's be real here. What would you rather watch? This? Why are you helping me? Because it's the right thing to do. You need a pilot. I need a pilot. Or this. You're putting girl jewelry on a boy dog. He's got enough self-esteem issues as a chihuahua mom. That's his bling! This? Yeah! Yes! Did you see that? Or this. Shut up, Grandma! Grandma take your prune juice! This? BB-8 says he's on a secret mission. He has to get back to your base. Apparently he has a map that leads to Luke Skywalker and everyone's after it. Luke Skywalker? I thought he was a myth. Or this. I guess I just have a, a weakness for hot guys, for, for tight abs and, and really big arms. Hell, if the writers of Transformers was working on The Force Awakens, they would probably have Finn trying to score with Rey and failing be the main focus of the film for a straight hour until Han and Chewie arrive, rather than just have it be a passing joke. You got a family? Got a boyfriend? Cute boyfriend? None of your business, that's why. Anyway, so this character named Jazz starts talking like some white middle-aged screenwriter trying to be hip with the kids. This looks like a cool place to kick it. <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? And they tried to excuse this by saying that they learned English through the internet. We've learned Earth's languages through the World Wide Web. Yeah, if they waited 10 years, they would have had him saying things like Talk or Equal Money Rare Capacity or Make Great or A spicy goodness like a boss. So Optimus Prime starts explaining why they're here on Earth. Megatron somehow ends up in the Arctic, and Sam's great-grandfather accidentally activates the quadrants of the life cube or something. Then a light comes out of Megatron's eye and hits Captain Wickwicky. And even though the light was strong enough to push him onto the ground, instead of completely shattering his glasses, it only cracks him and somehow imprints the coordinates to the cube onto the glasses. Because I guess that's how light and glass works. So Optimus Prime's obviously had enough screen time, so let's see what our other human characters are up to. Okay, Maggie, look. Let me break it down to you how it's gonna happen. They gonna come through that door and be good cop, bad cop. Don't fall for that, all right? That's why I ate their food. So they put the plate of donuts out here to test your guilt. If you don't touch it, you're guilty. I ate the whole plate. The whole plate. She did! 
She did it. She's the one you want. All right, I was just sitting at home watching cartoons, playing video games with my cousin, and she came in there. Glenn, All right? you freak. Hey, I am not going to jail for you or anybody else. I have done nothing bad my entire life. Riveting. So after that, Shia comes home with all the Autobots and... Ugh, oh my god, I can't even begin to describe how stupid this whole scene is. They do the whole sci-fi cliche of trying to hide the alien creature from the parents. I'm gonna sweep up the whole, uh, house right now. Hey idiots, you're not the Iron Giant. You can transform into cars, right? And yeah, they eventually do that, but it's in the backyard of his house. This isn't hiding, this is my backyard, not a truck stop. I get it, that's the joke, but this could easily be solved by having them park somewhere discreet, or just have them casually drive around the neighborhood and just have Sam tell Bumblebee that they have the glasses and meet up later. I mean, fuck Optimus, I thought you guys were smarter than this. Oh yeah, they even managed to make Optimus Prime look like a fucking idiot by having him uncharacteristically say, My bad. My bad, my bad, my bad. They took the role too seriously to make fun of it. I mean, going back to The Force Awakens, could you imagine if at the end they had Luke say, Oh shit, you found my lot saver. GG fam, I thought it was gone for good. So then the movie just goes on and on with this bullshit. <coughs> uh, it's killing me, it's so bad. so fast um with his legs what the fuck do you mean how did you get over there so fast wow that was tingling oh gotta try that yeah that looks fun yep these are the people that are gonna save humanity ladies and gentlemen and just when the comedy in this film couldn't get any more bad on an embarrassing level this happens Question what you're doing here. You're, you're ruining my oh, youth, for okay? For Pete's sakes, you are so defensive. Were you masturbating? Judy. Was oh. I master? No, Mom! Gotta earn that PG-13 rating somehow, I, I guess. God damn it, first this movie was military propaganda, then it was a high school comedy, and now it's a fucking Adam Sandler film with Autobots bumbling around like morons in the background. This movie called Transformers wants to be everything but a Transformers movie. Judy, better call the city, we got a blow Transformer. Hey guys, remember, it's a Transformers movie. Did you, you remember that this is a Transformers movie? Oh yeah. The parents are very irritating. Yeah, yeah, can I take them out? And now Ironhide wants to kill someone's parents just for the hell of it. I thought you guys wanted to save humanity. Ronald Wickety? It's with Wiki. Who are you? We're the government. Sector 7. Never heard of it. Never will. Oh, thank God. John Turturro. I don't care that your character just popped out of nowhere. You're an underrated actor. You gotta save this film. So yeah, these guys are a part of some agency called Sector 7, which I guess specialize in extraterrestrial behavior. You know, because Area 51 was too cliched. But you better get those guys out of my garden or I am gonna beat the crap out of them. Your mom's so nice. So yeah, this guy uses a scanner that detects alien things. I guess. And he's all like, Yep, this guy's definitely seen some aliens. Let's arrest the whole fucking family, including the dog. Wait, what's the fucking point of that? Anyway, so this guy starts interrogating Sam and... Wait, hold on. Michaela? That's her name? Alright. And it's here that I realize just how dull of an actress Megan Fox is when she has to portray an emotion that's not polite indifference or slight annoyance. Car had been stolen. Really? from me, um, from my home, and but it's fine now because it's back. It came back. Well, not by itself. Well, no. Because cars don't do that because that would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you, in the training bra. Wait, it, what, in the what? Do not test me. Especially with your daddy's parole coming up. What? Parole? You know those cars my dad used to teach me to fix? Well, they, they weren't always his. You stole car. She's a criminal. Criminals are hot. Ugh. Was that, was that a middle-aged man hitting on a fucking high school student? Is that what I just saw? Oh, God. Uh, all right. I don't know what the fuck you were going for with that scene, but you somehow managed to make John Turturro even creepier than he was in Mr. Deeds. I am very, very sneaky, sir. I see that. I like feet. I do not know why. Wait, why was John Turturro in an Adam Sandler film? Why is he in this film for that matter? So after that shit, they get intercepted by Optimus Prime. Taking the children was a bad move. Oh, you think that's bad? He should have been there when he was lusting after the children. Criminals are hot. I have a 
record because I wouldn't turn my dad in. One of you had to sacrifice anything in your perfect little life. Oh, what a bitch. He was just surprised that he had a criminal record. Who wouldn't be? Your clothes, all of it, off. For what? For threatening my dad. Threatening your dad? Your dad's a fucking car thief. This is what you get for threatening to do your job as the man of the law. He's my dad. That means it's okay for him to break the law. I hate everyone in this movie. So then the police find out about this, and there's another action scene, and... Yeah, I'm bored too. Wait, did he just kick them both in the face? <laughs> what was even the point of that? Alright, I have to admit, this scene right here is somewhat effective. Because Bumblebee is the Transformer that we get to see the most and he wasn't a complete douchebag, it's easy to feel at least a little bit sorry for him when he's being held down. Are we just gonna stand here and do nothing? There's no way to free Bumblebee without harming the humans. Anyways, time for more political talk, yay! Tom Banachek, I'm with Sector 7, Advanced Research Division. Never heard of it. I'm a little busy, Tom. I think you can see that. So, not even the Secretary of Defense knows about Sector 7? How credible are you guys, anyway? Oh, look, it's the teaser trailer of the film. You know, the one that made it look like it was actually gonna be about the Transformers. Alright, so Bumblebee is taken to Sector 7, along with Sam and Michaela. Also, these guys are coming, too, in case you were wondering what relevance they have to the film. Oh, and the rest of the Autobots are there, too. Why are we fighting to save the humans? They're a primitive violent race were we so different they're a young species they have much to learn but I've seen goodness in them freedom is the right of all sentient beings great speech Optimus I'm serious it makes me wish that you were actually the main focus of the film all right so sector 7 this is where they keep Megatron and the cube. And this is where Shia explains why the Decepticons want the cube in case you weren't paying attention the first time. They came here looking for some sort of cube looking thing. Anyway, Mr. NBE1 here, AKA Megatron, wants to use the cube to transform human technology to take over the universe. And then the little guy finds the cube and tells all the other Decepticons about it, yada, yada, yada. Whoa. Is that Freddy Krueger that been up in here or something? Oh, no, man. Freddy Krueger have four blades, man. That's only three. That's Wolverine. <laughs> right? That's Wolverine. <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. All right, so the Decepticons finally arrive to fuck shit up, and then this stupid shit happens. I'm about to take me to my car. He's going to know what to do with the cube. Your car? It's confiscated. It's unconfiscated. We do not know what will happen if we let it near this thing. You don't Nobody know. Nobody knows. Maybe you know, but I don't know. You just want to sit here and wait and see what happens? I, I have people's lives at stake here, young man. Take him to the car. Oh. Drop it. Yeah, take this kid I don't know to some alien robot thing that I know even less about, or I'll shoot you in the fucking chest. I mean, my platoon was attacked by one of these things, so with the knowledge I have, I should be a little more reluctant to let a child near an alien robot. But yeah, take the kid to the alien robot, right now, or I'll shoot you. You just caused a huge commotion for what amounts to serendipity and the hunch of a high school kid that you don't even know. How the fuck did you even get past basic training? Alright, so then they find Bumblebee, who reduces the size of the cube, and then... Stay here, we're screwed with Megatron and the other hangar. Mission City is 22 miles away. We're gonna sneak that cube out of here, and we're gonna hide it somewhere in the city. Good. Right. Wait, are you fucking serious right now? I mean, Megatron's plan is to take over the world by taking over human technology, and you're just gonna hide this thing in the place with the most technology and has the population of God knows how many people? Where would you even hide it? The subway system? Maybe they'll bury it in Central Park somewhere. Just bury it in a desert. I, I don't know. Just... Anything other than the fucking city! Alright, so then Megatron breaks away from the ice, and despite the fact that he landed on Earth long before the internet was even a thing, he's able to speak perfect English, and the first thing that he says is... Uh, okay. Was that addressed to the audience or everyone in Sector 7? Either way, we already know you're Megatron. Alright, so as they're transporting the cube, they get followed by the Decepticons, resulting in a fight scene with Optimus Prime. We're almost two hours into this two and a half hour action flick, and we finally get a fight scene with the most recognizable Transformer. <laughs> What? 
No. I don't care how fascinated kids are with giant robots. If that were to happen right in front of a kid's face and he almost dies, he's most likely going to be terrified. I know, that's the joke, but the joke is fucking dumb and I'm sick of this movie trying so hard to be funny and failing miserably. I mean, at least when the Dark Knight made this cliché joke, the kids were only excited when the explosion was far away and didn't really affect them. It's Starscream! What do you mean, what am I talking about? They shot at us! F-22 pilots would never fly below buildings. That's alien. That ain't friendly. Yeah, maybe that's why you shouldn't have taken this thing to the fucking city. I Fuck this shit, I'm done! Oh, you got Megatron. Come here, little cretin. You want a piece of me? You want a piece? No! I want two! Yeah, great line, Megatron. GG, fam. Oh, now I see why we had to take the cube into the city. It's so we can end this film with an exciting fight scene with destruction of landmarks, gravel, cars, and all that shit. And on top of that... MORE PRODUCT PLACEMENT! You see, I wouldn't mind the product placement of this film if it was at least subtle and only noticeable to those who are looking for it. But throughout this entire film, the product placement has been anything but subtle. Whether it be the giant Burger King logo in the background of this scene, the SD card shot, the Mountain Dew vending machine that shoots killer cans at people, the fact that the Xbox 360 makes the startup noise before it transforms. <laughs> And what a great ad for Microsoft, by the way. Play Halo 3 or our consoles will fucking kill you. Wait a minute, is that a Furby truck? I thought that fad died off in the 90s. When the hell were they relevant in 2007? Go to the roof. Set the flare. No. Signal the chopper. And set oh, the I flare. Can't do this. Listen to me, you're a soldier now. No matter what happens, I'm really glad I got in that car with you. You know, watching these scenes may become to kind of a depressing realization about these films. Now, for some of you, I might be pointing out the obvious, others might be a little confused or even mind-blown when I say this, but hear me out. Michael Bay's version of Transformers is to its young male audience what Twilight is to its young female audience. Both films cater to their demographic by showcasing a high emphasis on gender-specific expectations that they set for themselves when they're a teenager or even in their early 20s. For females, it's finding a guy that loves you and marrying him and having a kid. For males, it's proving that you're a man by either joining the military, driving a cool car, or banging the hottest chick in town. All of this is layered with some elements of fantasy. With Twilight, it's vampires and werewolves. With Transformers, it's aliens and giant robots. Twilight caters to its female audience with long, gratuitous scenes where two characters talk about how much they love each other. Scenes where guys take their shirt off. Romantic makeout sessions. Transformers caters to its male audience with action scenes. Long shots of Megan Fox's torso. Long shots of really nice and shiny cars. A huge focus on the military. Political talk that you pretend to like because you want to feel smart. And a scene where a guy shoots a thing and goes, Wah! Testosterone, bitch! So yeah, now you realize why both of these franchises made a shit ton of money. But seriously, not to sound too smug, but you guys should really have some brain food every once in a while. It'll help both you and the film industry. Alright, I explained why these shitty movies make money. Can I go home now? No? Fuck. So anyways, Private Shithead tells Shia to take the cube to the chopper so they can take it away from the city. Even though it was this guy's idea to bring it to the city to begin with. You know what? Fuck this movie. If Michael Bay really wanted to end this movie with a fight in the city, he should have just had Megatron steal the cube at Sector 7 and be like, Alright, time to test this bastard out. Now where can I find a place with a lot of human technology? Hey, look, a city! Just one simple idea made so much more sense than what they actually put in the film. But you know what? Despite the plot holes, the shitty dialogue, the obnoxious product placement, and the pandering to an easily manipulated audience, the conflict between Optimus Prime and Megatron is actually not that bad. They fight, they do some property damage, they shoot things, they banter about humanity. Humans don't deserve to live. They deserve to choose for themselves. And you will die with them! I mean, yeah, it's interspliced with all this other shit I don't care about, but at times it feels like I'm finally watching the movie that I paid to see. Oh yeah, did I mention Megatron's voice by Hugo Weaving in this movie? Is it fear or courage that compels you, fleshly? You believe you're fighting for something or more than your survival? Can you tell me what it is? Do you even know? Alright, as much as I praise this part of the film, the ending of the fight is a little anticlimactic. In the end, most of the damage done to Megatron is from the military, because I guess this film hasn't stroked America's cock just enough yet. And then Shia kills Megatron by doing this. You fucked up!
Okay, just to recap, Optimus Prime's original idea was to sacrifice himself by inserting the cube into his own chest. If all else fails, I will unite it with the spark in my chest. If I cannot defeat Megatron, you must push the cube into my chest. If he's supposed to be so smart, then why did he think to do this earlier? Instead, this alien robot from another planet was outwitted by a high schooler. Don't you think it would have been more satisfying to see Optimus Prime defeat Megatron with the cube? So anyways, Megatron's dead and the battle is over. And the only casualty from the Autobots, you know, aside from the property damage, is that Jazz is dead. Which, I guess we're supposed to feel bad, even though all he did in the film was say, This look like a cool place to kick it. We lost a great comrade. But gained new ones. Yes, we lost a slightly annoying robot and gained a completely obnoxious piece of shit of a human being. And even though we never saw Bumblebee get his vocal cords fixed, he can finally talk again and he speaks his one spoken line to Sam. You speak now? I love you. Nah, I'm just kidding. This is what he actually says. I wish to stay with the boy. So the film ends with Sam getting the girl at the end, the military guy and reuniting with his family that we barely know, and Optimus Prime giving a motivational speech. And this motivational, awe-inspiring speech is accompanied by the inspirational music of... Lincoln Park? We are waiting. Yeah, because this film couldn't be any more dated. I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe other science fiction films would have benefited with a Lincoln Park ending. Luke. Father. Son, come with me. Why didn't you tell me? Disclaimer, this part of the video was being edited together literally the day before Chester Bennington committed suicide. This was not meant to shit on the man's memory. I just wanted to point out how out of place his music felt in the film. So yeah, that was the first live action Transformers film. A series that's still going on to this day. I've heard people who hate the rest of the Transformers movies defend the first film by saying it was good or at least okay. But after re-watching this movie and analyzing it for this video, yeah, consider me not a part of that crowd. The redeemable qualities that I mentioned earlier are overshadowed by the terrible writing and overall execution of the story. You might have thought I harped too much about the human characters in this video, but the fact of the matter is, the movie harped too much about the human characters, and they weren't even good characters at that. But you know what? This video was a complete waste of time. None of what I said matters because Money Talks in this movie made enough dough to spawn four more films, and was only good enough to please the dumb 13 year olds it was catering to. Like I was at the time. Yeah, that fedora's not gonna look cool forever, you fucking retard. Enjoy it while it lasts. You got the touch! You got the power!